What's up guys, babies? It's your girl, GB Sid. I'm recording off my iPhone today because both of my camera batteries were dead. Um, I'm waiting on a homegirl to text me a location um, and Ro is having his last nap of the day. So it's almost six o'clock. I'm hoping that I can record this video pretty much in less than 10 minutes. Um, and then I'm gonna come home and do some editing and get a video out What's today? Today's Tuesday. I get a video out on Wednesday. This is kind of just an update. I hope that it falls on the ears of those who are meant to watch it. Um, I'm going to be quickly. Let me make sure that I'm recording. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to be quickly sharing my experience with postpartum depression and anger. So. <laughs> little rewind um when i was pregnant i was intentional about trying to pray against postpartum depression um i think i'm somebody who struggles with depression but i think mine is a little bit more i want to say functional but maybe it's not really that functional i guess i just never can always pinpoint when i'm depressed which is interesting because i'm i would consider myself pretty self-aware um but i don't know i think depression in my as i've gotten older looks very different than my depression when i was like younger or maybe it's not even that it looks very different it's just i feel i don't know when i was depressed like in high school or college or post-college i could actually say out loud i'm depressed but when I've gotten later into my working years, I guess depression manifested as letting my house get crazy and wanting to sleep all the time and wanting to smoke a lot and wanting to just sit up and chill. Um, and I, and perhaps maybe because I had a little boo or I was in a relationship, had a little thing, maybe I just never was able to pinpoint it as much because i had things that were distracting me um and i i realized that i was struggling with anxiety but i think i resisted saying oh i struggle with anxiety because sometimes folks use a lot of these words and they become kind of like these buzzwords to me like they're irritating to hear and talk about because so many other people are talking about them but the truth of the matter is is that I am a pretty anxious person and I do have to work overtime in a lot of cases um, to remind myself that the Lord will handle things that I don't have to worry that he's got it all under the control and yeah so had my baby in September boom I was good the first couple I was very overwhelmed and I think I had a little bit of baby blues in the beginning had an anxiety um a panic attack in the hospital but after that it was pretty smooth sailing didn't have major issues I loved motherhood I thought I was natural or I thought I was a natural um kind of was just using my intuition to handle different situations and when I made mistakes I just quickly took note and was learning from them and so um i really prayed against like i told y'all postpartum depression and mom guilt and so i haven't i didn't struggle with them in those first few months um i feel possibly maybe the shift occurred i can't pinpoint but possibly when it was going through a lot of his sleeping issues and i was sleep training and so i was super sleep deprived and um I think around the three months mark is folks kind of stop checking in on new moms as much and you get less support. Um, and so I, I, again, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm just kind of trying to, I guess, piece together. Um, so maybe around the three months mark, it started to kind of go down a little bit. Um, I had got off maternity leave, was working from home for six weeks. And while that should have been super easy, I think there was anxiety around trying to figure out what to do for eight hours a day. 
um, and not wanting to finesse the system and be completely dishonest and have no integrity, but also being like, okay, Lord, I need income because I have bills to pay. So that was, I remember that being stressful, but it wasn't, it shouldn't have been stressful because girl, you're at home, but I was still a new mom. Um, so that was that. I'm returning leave at the end of November. The holidays came, those were cool, whatever, whatever. Um, go watch my last vlog. I'm actually, not my last vlog, but I'm gonna post my holiday vlog. Um, you could tell I was, it was just chaotic and I was stressed and that was kind of a stressful time was the holidays, but God had brought something really beautiful from that. Then I, my official time at my company had came to an end mid-January. And so from mid-January all up until now, which were mid-March, um, so it's been two months, um yeah it's been two months exactly my last day was on january 12th it's now march 12th been two months and still unemployed and that was something that i was really trusting and believing god for or so i thought um that i was really trusting and believing god for this new employment something that would give you know exceed my salary expectations work from home then i started to realize okay maybe i need to budge a little on the work from home let me look at jobs outside most of my expertise comes in management um but recently in my past two years has been in food industry before then i worked at just in leadership positions at more like retail employment and then before that i had worked at subway for five years on and off so now i'm applying to a lot of manager roles but the issue with manager roles is a lot of them are not paying what um, I, I need to keep the roof over my head and to put my son in daycare and to keep myself fed. Um, and so having to remind myself that God is going to take care of it. And for me, um, if I'm being honest, you would think that being in crunch time like this would make you turn it up. But I think me, when I'm overwhelmed, when I'm stressed, when I'm depressed, I actually end up just going at a halt and doing nothing. And so money stopped coming in, you know, in January, but then our taxes hit. And I did have a savings. Is my son awake? Uh, he's not supposed to take a long nap, so I'm going to have to get him up if I'm still yapping in a minute. So anyway, you know, I haven't missed a meal, haven't missed a bill, but um, I've been doing a little Instacart, a little here and there, but not enough to really make up for all the income that I would be losing from my previous um, job. So just been overwhelmed y'all. And I was pretty consistent with my content and then I stopped and it was really hard to get back. And then I was struggling with really like kind of deciding what kind of content I wanted to do. Cause I feel like if I focused all on being like a single mom and made that kind of my niche, um, I think I could probably do something with that. However, I don't want my whole content to be just about being a mom. I still want to talk about other things. Um, and motherhood is very important to me and I love motherhood, but it's not necessarily at this time, like the main thing I want to focus on. Um, so yeah, that was kind of the postpartum depression, still struggling with it, um, trying to be intentional about still making sure that I, you know, shower twice a day, um, get out and get some sunshine when the weather is nice, get out the house as much as I can. Um, but the past couple of days y'all have just, or the past couple of weeks really have just been like, ugh, ugh. Um, and then the, the postpartum rage, my son was doing this thing where I had got him on a good sleep pattern and then he hit his four month regression. So he started regressing and then this was during the holidays. So then he was spending the night at his dad's house. And um, just during that holiday time, I think his schedule was just off, right? You know, <sighs> then we got home. It took us a minute to readjust. We didn't readjust, he, I got sick, he got sick, and that took longer to get his schedule back. So we are just now finally getting his schedule back. Um, we just got a crib too before his bassinet was too small. So the problem with the bassinet was 
I couldn't just let him cry it out and do the 5, 10, 20, 15, 30 minute thing that I was following, the fervor method. I couldn't do that anymore because my son was able to pull his little behind up and I was scared that he would fall out of the bassinet, okay? So, I, he was sleeping with me and co-sleeping saved my life in the beginning. Now, get out my bed, get out my bed. So I found myself just having fits of rage, not necessarily towards him, but just, it would be little things y'all, like he started waking up. This is, he's five months pushing six months old. He would start waking up every hour and a half, two hours. Mind you, I'm a single parent, okay? Single parent. Um, I do have friends that do watch him. I do have a daycare lady that has watched him last week and that was such a, fresh a breath air but I am doing this for the most part by myself and I was overwhelmed don't have a job so it's a lot easier but I was super overwhelmed waking up every hour and a half two hours um y'all he was nursing and I want to say maybe his finger had like scratched me and I was like ugh, moved his finger out the way a couple moments go by little things that set me off his toenail like scratched my stomach I swear to you, I lost it. When I say I lost it, I just mean internally, I was fuming. Like, I was almost nervous. Like, I thought I needed deliverance, y'all. I'm like, do I have a demon? Like, I should not be this angry. Um, I took him and I had uh, placed him in his bassinet real, real quick because I knew that he would start crying and roll out. But placed him in his bassinet real quick. I went out here in the living room, got the swing, put the swing in my room put him in the swing y'all I said I can't do this I can't leave him in the bassinet but you just cannot be with me he wasn't really settling he wasn't going to sleep it was like he was tired but he didn't just want to fall asleep now just go to sleep so put him in a swing um I'm nervous that my that my friend is gonna text me but it's okay I'm sure have to wait Put him in a swing and um, this was like probably four, three o'clock in the morning. Put him in a swing, just let him cry, buckle him up, um, close the door, pitch black. Before I used to have a night light, uh -uh. pitch black, uh, thunder noise, white noise machine on. I went and took a shower, y'all. And I screamed <laughs> because I was so pissed. And I have little fits like that. Uh, probably three times where I just had to get up and was like, uh-uh, can't do this, and automatically put him in the swing. Now that we have the crib, the swing is back in the living room, um, and he's sleeping much better, thank God. But yes, I was I was very angry. Um, now, I never did anything to him. Um, I can't relate to when women say they wish they never had kids. I can't relate to that. Um, I don't feel guilty about getting angry. Um, it was irritating. Go to bed. You, you're waking up every hour and a half, two hours. Um, even sometimes when it felt like I was doing the naps perfectly. <sighs> no, perhaps I wasn't. I mean, when I was doing Instacart, his naps were getting interrupted on some days. So, but overall, y'all, I just felt like. I'm pissed off and I think this is a normal it's normal for somebody I I've been saying this recently you know having a baby is not a one-person job you need two parents and um, that are both involved and even if I don't have this major beef with my child's father we live in separate states and so there's an element of he only sees them so often right so there's just this element of like I'm doing it by myself. Like, even though I'm not technically doing it by myself, my child's father is involved. Um, it's just, oftentimes it just doesn't feel enough. Um, the support oftentimes doesn't feel enough. It feels like you need more. Even when I had him at the daycare lady for that week, I don't know if it's because I was sitting with her and sometimes talking for 30 minutes to an hour before I would really go do something, but and then would have to try to get back at a reasonable time. So the eight hours that I was leaving him there, it was really like probably six hours after we talked and got the drive time. So it just kind of felt like, okay, 
I need more of a breather. So this week he's been with me. I'm about to wrap up. This week he's been with me because like I said, I'm unemployed and I really spent a lot of my time getting my apartment together that, that previous week. I actually ended up not doing DoorDash and Instacart as much as I probably should have. But I chose to prioritize getting my apartment together because it looked crazy and it was obvious that my mental was not doing the greatest because my house being a little messy is normal. Um, I'm not a clean freak. I will let my house get messy and just clean it up. But my house was looking pretty crazy and um, it was definitely a reflection of what was going on in my head and I just felt um i was going through certain spiritual warfare that you know maybe i'll come back and talk about in another video i kind of want to pray and ask god how much i should share i don't want to be too open um because you just never know who's watching these videos and i don't know like if people hear this are they going to be able to take it and steward it and pray on it or are they you know might come across a witch who you know, is going to try to put a little hex on me, even though it won't click. But yes, you just want to be careful. So. so I ended up checking to see if my friend had texted me and didn't properly end the video. So thanks for tuning in. Um, pray for me. I'll pray for you. We will overcome this postpartum depression, anxiety, and rage. Love y'all. Talk soon. Bye-bye.